नमस्कार एवरीवन वेलकम टू माइंड स्पीक पॉडकास्ट आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट यू हैव ट्यून्ड इन टू दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल दैट वुड एनेबल मी टू ब्रिंग इन मोर पावरफुल गेस्ट लाइक श्री गुरु पशुपति जी हु इज अ मिस्टिक हु इज एंटरप्रेन्योर एंड हु एंड वी कैन कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट हिम अ लॉट बट देन आई हैड अ प्रिविलेज ऑफ टॉकिंग टू हिम फॉर वन आवर and i have learned great deal of information all through that one hour i have mentioned all the contact details of sri guru paspati ji in the description as well as there is a youtube link which directs you to the same podcast in a video format if you are interested in watching you may go there if you are interested in listening please listen to this This podcast has little bit extra audio or extra conversations which are more spiritual, more mystic and I'm sure you would enjoy this conversation because this has been very raw. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here you go, Sri Guru Pashupati ji. Thank you. Namaskar Guru ji. Welcome Namaskar. to this podcast. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's amazing to have you here in on my podcast like uh, on uh, It, I I don't know like I, I should be really thankful to YouTube I guess because it introduced me uh, to you and uh, thanks to you for accepting um, you know my invite to come and talk to us so let's get into the podcast sir so um, yes sir what 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 inspired you uh, to become a guru pashupati from ashwin um, I, because i've seen you uh, in order to research uh, in, in part of my research to understand mm. more about you i've seen mm. you've you've given ted talks you've you've conducted uh, corporate trainings and all so but then there you were ashwin now you're guru pashupati like i'm just trying to understand well, the then i was not a guru so i hadn't been uh, given shakti path by my guru uh, so i had to continue with my name until he told me to change my name Oh okay. The reason we change our name is so that we can disassociate from uh, the old lineage, the social lineage and associate with the spiritual lineage. Oh okay. So that yeah. that kind of creates a completely new identity for you. Get rid of the old identity and adopt an identity which Yeah. So do you mind uh, taking us through a little bit more uh, to to that Um, in, in the old entity, I was an entrepreneur and uh, a very successful entrepreneur. I was also a scientist. I was also a martial artist. I mean, I still am. But uh, that was all stuff I did for me. But now, when you get a new name and the new identity, you live a life for others, which means you don't have any problems to solve in your life. and you can help others with their problems those problems are how we get purpose there's no other way problems are the only way for having purpose in this world wow <laughs> wonderful sir so um, do you mind taking us through what what um, uh, you know your guru ji because i have seen uh, in the website that shankar nath ji 17000 years old early you know this lineage is what where you are coming out from so do you mind li- taking us little yeah bit? this lineage was started by shankar nath ji when it came around 17000 years ago as lakulesh he took an avatar to teach and um, that's when the yoga started to get documented and in the lineage of course uh, parvati who also took a uh, human birth at that time this was a previous yoga 6000 years ago it was uh, dwapar yoga so 17000 years ago also dwapar yoga was going on but it, it's preparation for this yoga called kali and uh, only in siddha yoga can we offer some kind of um, the side that is one thing yes only in siddha yoga can we offer some kind of solution for for these uh, afflictions that we have now in kali yuga where human beings are mostly afflicted by dishonesty and confusion 
and lack of senses they're not able to sense things properly so they are full of doubts some share all this has been warned and we've been told that this is what is going to happen so a safe space from that is our akhada the look akhada was made to keep you safe <clears throat> just like namishwaranya was made by the rishis uh the look akhada is made for the non rishis for the for the siddhas not for the rishis wow a lot of questions popping out right now i wanted to learn more about uh, you know the difference between siddha and rishi i also wanted to know more about uh, uh, the types of uh, yogas uh, mm-hmm. so but then i i the human beings yeah. siddha is the human beings while rishis are super human beings they are directly born from brahma and so they are, they went to brahma and they asked brahma can you please make a place safe for us so we don't get affected by the weapons of kali and uh, brahma then just from his chakras uh they came out this big chakra called nemi and that nemi went and fell around an aranya and that's called nemisharanya and that aranya had an entry place for people for the rishis but it would not let kali enter when because it's spinning so fast so none of kali's energy or influence could enter inside this aranya in a similar way shankarnath said i'm going to protect people but i'm going to protect them with knowledge and that's how the siddha path was founded and he wanted to teach human beings because he had taken a human out there and so he taught some techniques to human beings which were then passed on and later became many lineages like the nath lineage giri lineage jabur lineage vajra lineage so many kinds of lineages came up apart and uh, siddha is basically the mother of everything that you see outside because the word siddha means success and he taught a way that we can get all the four things dharma arth kaam moksha all these four things and uh, that means having a purpose and then knowing what's right and what's wrong for the purpose knowing right from wrong it's possible only when you have a purpose if i don't have a purpose then nothing is right and nothing is wrong everything is okay because how do you know whether something's right or wrong then you need morals when you don't have purpose you need morals to navigate you but when you have purpose it is very clear which way you should turn if you turn away from the purpose and then it's wrong if you turn towards the purpose it's right so you should have a purpose that doesn't just involve you it should involve other people it's not all about you it's not it's not solo entrepreneurship you need to have a purpose that involves other people yeah so that's uh, dharma then there's artha if you follow your purpose you know what you'll make a lot of money If you create a purpose and you follow it you will make a lot of money and that's called as that you have something called a cash flow you never have to worry for your food or your shelter or even for your social status you know have to worry about these things they're all just taken care of and then you have to learn karma which is sexual worship and if you get successful in that it leads to moksha which is bring free from the cycle of birth and death but while you're still in the body that means you don't have to die you don't have to die and you don't have to be born you continue in the same body that's what my guru has done he's done it uh, and he's been alive now for 2700 years there are times he got bored but he kept finding purpose through problems and he kept getting excited by them and so i'm just following his example of course yeah so one of the uh, major things which dragged me towards your videos on youtube was bahatar baba ji your guru ji so um, let tell us little bit more about him like um, because i uh, one of the podcast i've listened to uh, he mean uh, you mentioned that you actually touched him his light body and uh, that's fantastic to uh, listen i mean um, to know please take us little bit about um, uh, about your experience about him so that uh, I, have, i have the good fortune to live with mother babaji he's been my teacher since i was 12 years old and now I'm almost 50 years old so he's been my teacher for 
some 38 years. And uh, he's been coming and going and I've met him uh, many times in person. I even met him in person when I went to the mountains this time. I went to a temple called uh, Trilokinath and he was there. And uh, so he keeps showing up. He gives me a direction, uh, clears my confusions and puts me on the path. What would you like to know about him? A lot like because and a person um he's certainly not human in, according to me like i mean at least he's human he, but okay he's also an avatar of kartik you know murugan oh yeah okay i didn't know about that and he's taken human form to support the work of the akhada Okay. And you know, he has a, had a long learning curve. It's 2,700 years. He's had many kinds of students. Even uh, Sai Baba, Shirdi Sai Baba was a student. Jesus was a student. Kabir was a student. So he's been teaching for a long time now. Wow. He was also my teacher in a, a previous birth, which I'm not allowed to talk about. So I know him from a long time. I'm spellbound. I don't know what I need to ask anymore. But then, um, okay, let me get my senses together. Amazing. So this is the very first time I have known about Babaji was to the movies, to be frank. Like that's from the Rajinikanth movie. Baba movie. Yeah. Baba movie. So uh, that fascinated me towards uh, his his character and then when i get uh, when i get to meet spiritual uh, leaders in when i was in chennai i have met uh, some some spiritual leaders and i've, I've listened uh, through them as well so how was um, how get, how do people get to interact with him like let's say if i want to talk to him how can how can i do that no, or am no. i am i supposed to be karmically good how, or how that? Will, because you want to talk to prime minister modi what should you do Maybe I have to reach out to his office. That's what I'm doing. You need to have a good reason. You need to have a good reason. Oh. Isn't it? When I was teaching self-defense, I was trying to contact Kiran Bedi. But she didn't consider my reason good enough, so she refused to me. Okay. I was trying to, go to teach self-defense to women in Delhi. And I wanted the help of the police department. But she didn't feel that was important, so she didn't meet me. So, you have to have something relevant, which is very important for Mahatma Babaji. Then you'll be able to meet him. And ask people, yeah, okay, you want to meet Babaji, why? Their why is very weak. There's nothing exciting about it. <laughs> why would Baba meet you? So, you want to ask him something? Uh, you can. And if it's relevant, he'll reply. You'll get an answer in your head. It's not that difficult for him to reply. But when he realizes that it's just gas and you don't have any good reason to meet him at all and you don't really care about his work and you don't want to know anything about it and you don't want to help him in any way, then you call to him. He's not going to respond because yoga is symbiosis. It is you win and I also win. If you want to engage Mahathar Babaji, you have to make him also win. I'm doing the work that he wanted me to do in exchange for the learnings he wanted him to give me. And I was, I, I was made this offer because I had the potential to take that and make it happen. One of the works that came to me uh, is that, this, the, you know how Sanskrit died out? <clears throat> it's dead. So yeah, people do not read and understand Sanskrit because the Sandhis are too difficult. For, let me explain what Sandhis are. You know, Sanskrit is a Sandhya Basha. That means it's full of sandhis. And the, the sandhis are like a twilight zone where it, it can be day also, it can be night also. Okay? The same word, like pranayama. It can be prana plus yama or it can be prana plus ayama. Because there is a dirga a for both as a sandhi. Now you have to break it down. Is it prana plus yama? Is it the ending, ending of prana? No. It is prana plus ayama, which means the cultivation of prana. Two opposite meanings, right? In one, the prana is increasing, in one, it's decreasing. So, 
A lot of people have taken wrong meanings out of yoga because they were not yogis. They just took a guess. They're like, any meaning, my name, more, and picked one. And then it was wrong. So because it was wrong, the yoga that they were practicing was completely irrelevant. Unless there's a guru, you can't know these locks, right? It's like a combination lock. You need to know that 13, 8, 7, whatever. If, if you know the combination only, you can open the lock. So all the Sanskrit texts are locked up. And only a guru can open it. But we have never had the kind of communication that we have today. Look where you're sitting and look where I'm sitting. And here we are talking. It's amazing. And this is recorded. And then when you put it on YouTube, it's forever. So this kind of documentation power has never been there before. We can put things on the blockchain and they'll be there forever. I mean, not forever, as long as there are computers. Okay. So uh, this is why... From the palm leaf scriptures, first it was orally transmitted for three yugas. Nobody wrote down anything. In the end of, uh, in the beginning of Kali Yuga, it was written down as the Vedas, and that's 6,000 years ago. It was written down as the Vedas and the Puranas and the Upanishads and all of the various Vedangas. Okay? So that's a big volume of books. You look at any other religion, they've got one book. Sikhism and, uh, you know... Christianity, Islam, Judaism. But Buddhism, of course, has many books. But still, it's nothing, it's no match to the kind of volume that was written by one man, Vyasa. And his team, of course, not alone. And for writing the Vedas, he had called Lord Ganesh only to write it, because it's so complicated. So, people can't even understand the Vedas. The same thing has happened with old Tamil, it's gone out of existence. So I want to be the Vyasa of the Kalyug where I can translate all of these into simple English. I've just started my work. Now I'm 50, I just started my work on this planet. But this will take me another 13, 14, 15 years. I don't know how long it'll take me. But I'm at it. I don't have anything else to do. This is what I'm doing. And in the meanwhile, I'm creating a forest of Siddhas to help me with this work. So that's really what we're going to do. So that people have real good knowledge and they don't get fooled by wrong gurus. They should have all the real knowledge for free. Then what are the gurus going to teach? They have to make sense. They have to take the student to the next level. They have to give them power. They have to give them knowledge. They have to give them purpose. If a guru can't give you any of these three things, then it's a shame. And so that's what we're doing now. We're making life easy for people. So then they don't have to suffer for lack of knowledge. It's real knowledge is only in the Vedas. The rest of the knowledge, what we call science, is temporary knowledge. It keeps changing every day. But the Vedic knowledge doesn't change. This is eternal knowledge, Sanatan Dharma. So this is eternal knowledge that never changes. And if you know this knowledge, then you don't have to worry about anything. Because everything from how to get dharma, artha, kama, moksha, everything has been detailed. We don't need any other lessons. So that's why it's so massive. When they burnt Nalanda University, they said it burnt for like six weeks or something. I don't know. For a long time, because there were that many books. But they burnt it all. Now they can't do that. If I put it all in English, nobody can burn it. Knowledge is shared. So that's the yeah. power which you are sharing. Amazing, sir. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, as a like before we get to before we get to the next question, so in order to meet Sri Mahavatar Babaji, I have to have the right question and the right intention. And if it happens, he will he will reach out to us. Right. That's that's the conclusion. Why not? Even Modi will reach out to you if you have the right reason. <laughs> well, and Mahavdar Babaji is like the king of kings, okay? He's like the emperor of 18 planets, including Earth. And he's a spiritual emperor. He's a spiritual emperor. So he's worried only about three things Icha, Kriya, Jnana. He taught some Kriya to Gauri Marsha. Nothing much happened out of it. People are practicing and they're not really getting anywhere because it's Kalyuk. You can't just practice Kriyas and get away. You have to be sharp like a warrior. You have to be built like a warrior. You have to think like a warrior. And you have to make build an army like a warrior. Then only you can do something in this world. So people have to learn that leadership. 
Only then they're going to go somewhere. If you just do kriyas, nothing's going to happen. There has to be jnana and there has to be itcha first. First itcha, then kriya, then jnana. First you make your purpose, then you take action on it. And when you take action on it, you'll get knowledge. You can't get knowledge about it and then take action. It doesn't work like that. So, knowledge is the blessing given to people who take action. Wow. So let's say if if I had to take the uh, you know pick up the right purpose, so how would I do that? Like because whatever I am take pick up any problem you have purpose immediately. Pick up a problem and okay. care about it. When you start caring about it, automatically you got purpose. Oh, okay. people really care about themselves, they they can find some problem in their life and make it their purpose. But for people who care about a problem that other people are facing, then you know they got big purpose. Like I got purpose for the next fifteen years. I hope it's fifteen years. I hope it's not longer. But if it is longer, I don't mind. I don't mind putting in twenty-five years into what I've now decided to do, because it's a big problem that I've identified in the world that people are suffering because they don't have knowledge the, of the basic things of how to live a happy life and a healthy life. They don't know. They're not being taught by their education, and they paid lakhs of rupees for their education. Oh, there these educational institutions charge so much, and then teach you trigonometry, which you're never going to use. What about the cheek of these people? It's too much. Well, uh, trigonometry is one such example. Don't don't you think that creates an attitude within us? Uh, let's say if I learn. Uh, I'll put forward my example. Uh, when I was in, when I was doing engineering, I was a really bad student. I mean, it, it took for me a few more, a uh, few more months to complete my total course. Mm-hmm. But then, mm-hmm. the the stress and the processes which I went through has developed an attitude within me, and that has enhanced my work style when I started mm-hmm. working as a IT employee. So, mm-hmm. so do you think education does that or? Or, no, or I think it's completely irrelevant at this point in time, because all we all that I got from education was knowledge and mathematics. That's the those are the two things I still use even today. And I I would love to have had only those lessons and then not not torture me for so many years. And I'm sure I could have learned this within the first first ten years of my life. I could have mastered language and arithmetic no problem. And I still have a lot of free time to learn the things that I wanted to learn, like martial arts. Here I used to fit in two martial art classes between my school, and I said I'll quit school because it's interfering with my martial arts. So I quit school at the age of six. Uh, sorry, at the age of twelve, I realized that I can hack the system. I just need to get attendance in the first period. After that, they're not bothered whether you're there or not. They don't care enough to know whether you're there or not. So I could easily slip out. You know, I started working. I became an entrepreneur. Why didn't they teach me how to make money? That's the problem. No one. Why would you have money. to even be an IT employee if they taught you how to make money? Exactly. Why would you have to be one among thousands of employees? You go to work. It feels like a tribe, but nobody really cares for each other. That's not a tribe. Your IT employee workforce is not your tribe. They're not going to stand behind you for anything, and you don't have autonomy, and you don't have entrepreneurship. So it's miserable the way companies are run, and companies need education to provide them with their bakras. <laughs> yeah, that group. So, yeah. So, from, from, because you've been an entrepreneur yourself, right? So, uh, how did you manage to become so successful? I'm sure you haven't followed any typical formula. What uh, you know? <laughs> what you just mentioned. So I just take invest in people. I invest in people, and I give them empowerment. I give them knowledge, and I give them empowerment and direction. And I tell them that now you're an entrepreneur. You're not my employee. So oh. people who work inside my company. Everybody's an entrepreneur, and they realize that they don't need any other client other than me. So they they're all working for me like that. And I'm giving them enough work. It just takes thought. People don't have two minutes to sit down at peace and think, because they don't have peace. 
Their emotions are all over the place. They don't know how to control their emotions. Why school and college didn't teach you this? How to control your emotions? Such a sim- basic lesson. It's not simple, but it's a basic lesson. If you don't know how to control your emotions, then you are going to make a mess of whatever you do. Because your emotions play a role in everything. Everything. You can't even tie your shoelace if you don't have good emotions. That will also be bad. So, why are we not emphasizing to teach kids? Now, kids are emotionally out of control nowadays. They don't have good emotions. Like, when I was a kid, we used to only feel happiness and joy. The only sad thing for us was going to school. Otherwise, the rest of the day, we were outdoors, playing, having fun. But kids today have apartments. They don't even have open spaces to go and play. And they don't know where to play. They don't know what what to do with each other. They don't have adventures together with other kids. They don't read stories anymore. They don't have anyone to look up to. They don't have role models. So, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. Wow. That's so true. Because, um, okay, uh, wow. So, like, how do you think the spiritual path would enhance our entrepreneurial journey like because the what you just said was amazing you ensured that your um, employees don't feel as an employee but an entrepreneur themselves and you being their client that's a very to- totally different outlook right because then that gives them a purpose because uh, you are driving them through a purpose towards um, uh, your purpose and they do, they feel they are working for themselves rather than working for you that's that's uh, yeah and they have job security because you know i'm not going to kick them out cuz they're doing a great job they're doing it on their own terms i'm not following up did you work today did you work 8 hours you have to sit in my office they sit in their house they work and they can't stop working because they love their work <laughs> i have to tell them to take a break and then everybody is waiting like for sunday saturday sunday so they can get drunk None of my employees drink. They're not employees. They're entrepreneurs. So none of my entrepreneurs drink. They don't have this habit of wasting money, eating outside on the weekend, and swigging things and having a party and drinking, and then just trying to recover from all the pain they went through from Monday to Friday, only to be greeted by Monday again. They're not happy. When happy people work together, they make a lot of beautiful things. When unhappy people work together, they make software with a lot of bugs. then they call it agile method after that <laughs> agile yeah i agree with that kind of so um so what would you suggest if let's say if i want to enter into entrepreneurship right now uh, what would you suggest i need to focus upon give very uh, mm-hmm. quickly it, it all begins you know i have a channel called um, um shastra I'm, well I'm 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 one of the guests in that it's done by my student Pratamesh and we talk about how to be a creator you the first episode is out it's pretty fantastic so you should watch it i've outlined this process step by step but okay. uh, in general what it means what what you should be able to do is to use your senses if you're using all your senses then you'll get the data about who needs your help and whom can you help or where do you, where do you lack or where should you start direction can be got when you use your senses but people don't use their senses they don't know what they're smelling they don't know what they're seeing they don't know what they're tasting they don't know what they're hearing so you need to know what your senses are the senses that grow above you that go outside sorry the senses that go outside are called sthula indriya then the ones that go inside they're called the antar indriya inside and then there is sukshma indriya which is a very secret practice which is taught by vyas in response to one of the sutras of the yoga sutra vyas has written a documentary on the yoga sutra so oh. in that he he describes how you should use your uh inside uh, your tanmatra or sukshma indriya 
how you should use it to reach a state of ekatatva and in ekatatva you have one goal one purpose and everything aligns to that a yogi should have ekatatva everything is one you shouldn't have like 10 goals it's one thing properly everything aligned together to make you work on that so that's when you put all your energy and focus it then things become easy for you because with the practice of yoga you get abundant energy what you need is senses and what the senses run on is energy if you don't have energy you don't have subtle senses you can't sense things like electromagnetic radiation you can't sense things like um, spirits you can't sense things like god you just can't sense it then you'll say i believe in god you won't say i know god because you can't sense it because you don't have the energy because you waste all your energy men waste their energy big time in ejaculation and uh, pornography addiction it's just normal nowadays okay? so men are so busy with their sexual urges they don't understand that sexual energy is different from sexual urges sexual energy helps you to create sexual energy i cultivate it's called virya when you cultivate virya you start to reverse age okay? like i'm 50 years old but i can do anything that a 25 year old can do and that's a rare uh, occurrence in this country at least i know there are people who are fit outside india but in india everybody lets themselves go after some age and they just don't go the what they eat they have no goals they don't have a self image that they want to become they don't have this internal like i want to become like this they don't have this goal so they don't know who they are they can't define themselves they don't know where they are they don't know with whom they are what they're doing together they don't have this clarity so it's only through the practice of yoga that we can get there and for anyone who wants to start watch my uh, newly released episode on how to be a creator yogi and it's on the channel called shastra that's for pretty phenomenal for you to get your uh, creation started you know it's time to be a creator and create something good amazing sir so i'll i'll put the link of the shastra youtube in the description uh, so that uh, people can subscribe and uh, watch and i'll also watch as well i think i yeah. did uh, the other episodes i guess not uh, this particular episode there's a thin guy called uh, prathamesh with with the beard who was interviewing yeah. me oh i think i did watch because the, um i follow a lot i subscribe to a lot of channels wherever you are there so maybe i i, I should have sub, uh, i should, I should have guy, he, he created a movie and his first movie won dada saheb phalke award wow <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's amazing that's that's that uh, i guess that is the most yeah, and he's also the like most. a very successful entrepreneur he, he runs this brand uh, stevia brand that helps the diabetics you know get sweet without sugar so he runs that brand and he's very successful having said that sir so uh, because uh, because i see uh, having the purpose would lead us out to uh, you know greater success right so what mm. how would i achieve aishwaryam or abundance in my life to the same procedure other people you know, but with the help of other people you can't do it alone okay okay there is so many parts to running a company you need a hr you need uh, you need the uh, r&d you need accounts you need operations you need manufacturing production and then you need uh, marketing and sales can one person do all this no people who call themselves solopreneurs are just fooling themselves one person can't do all this work so you need a team you need to build a team for to build a team you need a proper message you need to have clarity and you need to be a great communicator you need to learn how to make invitations to people create a frame for them in which they fall in love with what you ask them to do and then they'll come very true sir so what but then like if i create that frame like um 
So I'm 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 thinking and understanding what you just said because from all this. So basically, you are you are sharing or you are uh, making them adopt your purpose in a way, right? And because they have to work for you, I, I you... see that this person has potential to contribute to my larger purpose by making something a component of that his or her purpose. So okay. I invited my student uh, here. Uh, to write books, so I saw that she has the talent. That when I speak something, she's able to convert it into written material. So I said, "That's fantastic! You come here. What, I'll tell you which videos specifically are required by the market to make books. I want you to write them." And then I have another student, and he's uh, excellent at marketing. So I said, "We need to market this book," and he's on it. He's excited. So he'll market it. My book is almost ready. So like that, and when we get into the right momentum, we can launch a book a month, one book a month. I just want to sell ten thousand copies of one book every month. Wonderful. This is something. Uh, uh, I, I, until now, I've learned a great deal of knowledge uh, from this discussion so far. <laughs> Excuse me. So the abundance comes to us. Let's say if I the, again taking it back to the purpose, and then you make others um, share your purpose by making your purpose as their purpose as well, right? So you kind of uh, do they this. They don't make your purpose their purpose. They take a component of your purpose and they make it oh, okay. that their purpose. Like the person writing books for me, her purpose is to write books. But for me, the the larger purpose is to give knowledge to people. So she she's just there, and her purpose is to play her part as a writer, right? So our, our purpose uh, may not be the same, but it's all linked up. Just like parts of the body work, you know, the purpose yes. of the heart to pump blood, the purpose of the liver is to clean the blood. But they have different purposes, but the main purpose is to keep you alive. So, yeah. There are there are so many components of purpose which you will find out when you get a big enough picture. You'll find that that can be broken down into so many components of purpose, and you can invite one person who's appropriate for each of those components. So you have to think about it. People try to do ten people's work, and then they burn out as entrepreneurs. It's crazy. Yeah. So true. Procrastination happens because you're trying to do things that you don't want to do or you don't like to do. That's why you're procrastinating. There'll be so many things that components of that purpose which you don't know how to fulfill. Instead of doing just what you know, you're trying to do now things that you're no good at. And then when you do that, you'll obviously get hesitation. You'll feel bored. You'll feel like I can't do this because you're not meant to do that. Everybody's not meant to do anything. I'm not meant to do accounts. I can't do. Yeah, I'm always in the management part of the company, particularly in HR. That's my domain in my company. I take care of all the HR functions. Yeah. So I'm also in the L and D, right? Learning and development, which is part of HR. Which, for since we're a knowledge company, that's also part of manufacturing. But I don't do operations. I don't do marketing. I don't do sales. I don't have to do any of those things. Very true. So, do you think like okay? Now I'll go a little tangential uh, towards the uh, metaphysical side of it. So, do you mm -hmm. think me being um, uh, someone who is able to do whatever I'm doing has it got anything to do with my past life, or uh, or my karma which I've accumulated because? I'm talking to you right now. I feel it's a sukruta for me, to be frank. Like because I gain, I gain. The, so far, we have spoken around 50 minutes, and I've got immense amounts of amount of knowledge, which worth of years, to be frank. At, um, because you, you kind of taking me and filling the blanks, whatever were there in the the paragraphs which I had all through my life. So, having said that, do you think my karma has pulled? Uh, not pull, pull is the wrong word. My karma has brought you into my life. 
and mm. in the same way does this happen at a miniature level at the same time macro level as well so just yeah, trying yeah. to understand the concept of karma and then linking it back to success the the past life of a fruit is a seed <laughs> yeah like you should understand it like that so yes you've had a past life and that's become a seed for this life which of which you're eating the fruits now and then there'll be seeds inside these fruits which you will eat fruits early uh, later <laughs> like so you should be careful what le- seeds you're planting today because sometime in the future they'll become fruits if you spent your whole afternoon being upset at someone that's the seed you planted for today how stupid you're a farmer you had to plant a particular kind of crop but today you went and planted thorns what the hell is wrong with you how can you plant thorns on any single day that means you don't have purpose as a farmer you don't know what the hell you're growing So karma is like that. Karma is just the seeds that we plant. What we're enjoying now is the fruits of the seeds we planted earlier. It's a pretty simple system. So, little bit deeper into it, like where did it all start and why did it start? It's a very old ancient question. question. No, it's not. Okay. Now, what will you do even if you know the answer? Ah, okay. What, hope to do gain some power. Like what, what's what's the objective? So that's what I'm saying. Purpose oh, thinking should be our goal, right? Thinking, thinking with purpose should be our goal. So I'm going to ask you to think with purpose. What is the purpose of knowing this? How is it going to change your life one way or the other? I can say it all came from Shiva. It all came from Shakti. It all came from Vishnu. We should see. Vyasa said all these things. He said it all came from Ganesha. In different Puranas, he's saying different things. Yeah, the same guy. Just to show you that it's a ridiculous question and it doesn't have any effect on what you're doing right now. But uh, basically, what he says is there was a basic nothingness, and from that nothingness came some consciousness, and from that consciousness came Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. Okay. And then you know, even the Shakti, Shakti is where everything came from. Um, Shakti and Shiva are said to be uh, formless. Is this helping you in any way? Is my question. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to see. Knowing maybe... this, if you read Ganpati, uh, uh, like Brahmanda Puran, which is uh, uh, about Lord Ganesh, and say Lord Ganesh is the creator of everything. If you read Vishnu Puran, it says Lord Vishnu is the creator of everything. If you read Shiva Puran, it says Lord Shiva is the creator of everything. Devi Puran, Devi is the creator of everything. <laughs> okay, so that's why, depending on what you want to do, you subscribe to one of these. Depending on what you want to do, there are so many options for you to subscribe to, for how the universe was created, and you'll behave differently. So it depends on your bhakti for which god. So you choose the god which you have bhakti and read their Puran. If you want to read Skanda Puran, you read Skanda Puran. and then you'll understand that that's uh, considering him as the absolute creator beautiful sir beautiful so going back to the question of karma so um now the now i understand what <laughs> the ultimately it's all about the purpose right that's that's where that's where i purpose also depends on your timeline how much past are you looking into how much future are you looking into i'm considering okay. past of uh, few yugas Like at least from this, this kalpa, like the kalpa is the four yugas. So, I'm I'm looking at, uh, and within that kalpa, there are human beings come and go so many times. Man, there's a twenty-seven time in our kalpa that uh, human beings have come and gone. And wow, yeah, <laughs> there's twenty-seven the, times human beings are coming again. in this kalpa on this planet so that's my history i take one kalpa as one history i find that okay most people have their history starting from i don't know 1980 1990 that's where the history starts because that's when they were born correct so when you have large history then you have large future also and you can see things in advance so you need to build this eagle eye vision oh uh, you have eagle eye vision then you can know no if you can't plan everything by standing on the ground level I have to fly up and see it from the top. 
need a bird's eye view of everything then you know how things are building because that that gives you holistic picture you also see the inlets and outlets and everything in one like you also what is important and not important really changes its positions very true things which you didn't consider important are now very important and things which you considered important are now not at all important <laughs> very true very true wow so taking it back to the karma sir so do you think um you know what i have let's say if i do a, uh how should i put it let's say if my life is going in a wrong way okay mm-hmm. because um mm-hmm. because i am driven by purposes which are thrown at me rather than i adopt that that usually happens like either you are given a purpose by your parents you are given a purpose by your guru or not guru guru uh, the teacher i mean uh, you are given a purpose by the youtube video we don't know Sudden, mm-hmm. suddenly uh, a, a film actor gives you a purpose and you feel that's the purpose of your life and you run after it uh, only to realize that's you are falling mm-hmm. into a pit so mm-hmm. how do we understand the true purpose so is it the how do you identify the right problem let me put it that way because purpose comes from problem right so how do i there's pick no up right the right or wrong problem? problem there's no right or wrong problem just pick one any problem any problem okay be in a category of one because i don't like to be in a category with many people competing I like to be in a category of one. Every company that I started in a category of one. Nobody else can touch us. Because they can't do what we do. What so we have to solve such a problem. We have to solve such a problem that nobody has. Uh, oh, okay. Nobody has. It's uncharted territory. If you try getting in and being the second person and the also ran and all that, you will be plagued by competition. So don't go there. look can feel very different from the others we have to be in a category of one it to care about it man and support aesthetics okay support you learning the arts but people don't learn the arts of communication of making videos of lighting of story of visuals they're not learning this art they learn some useless subjects in school So it's an art it's about how you you present yourself what you communicate is what people know about you how else will they know about you to so communicate your good intentions communicate your honesty and people will recognize it it may take a few years but they'll recognize it when they see things happening when positive change is happening when you get invited into very big platforms and rub shoulders with big people then they'll know that okay this person is high quality then even with people who are not your customers will start talking about you it comes to that reputation reputation is everything you can't spoil your reputation it's all in your control there's nothing to be afraid of others can't spoil your reputation it's how you behave that determines your reputation others have zero power in spoiling your reputation because mm-hmm. even if you try to make some scandal or whatever on you you it's a short lived and temporary people will see the truth after some time so it's your time space i mean it's your your time um chunk that you're looking at people are seeing something as a setback and a failure and an absolute rejection but they don't know what the future holds they give up in too short time you know why because they don't have help they don't have basic knowledge of health they don't know how to repair their body faster than it damages this is called yoga you have to learn yoga first before you do anything in this world successfully you have to be a siddha then you can do things successfully you have to know how to repair your body faster than it damages every day then you have time others you don't have time it's a matter of time before you get some serious disease and die <laughs> so the first problem to solve is your own mortality you have to solve that first 
Only then you can have sustainable purpose. And if you're anyway going to die, what's the purpose of doing anything? You have to learn to repair yourself first and you damage yourself. Then you'll get enthusiastic to do something which will take 50 years to achieve. But otherwise you'll be like, yeah, okay, five year, 10 year, then I want to retire and I want to spend the last 20 years of my life relaxing on a beach. The only thing you can relax on a beach, if you know that it's the last 20 years of your life, mm. <laughs> relax on the beach. All you can do is get drunk and forget about it. <coughs> Very true. Very yeah. So people should take immortality seriously. They shouldn't laugh at it. They should laugh at immortality are going to die. It's a matter of life and death. Learn it from the same immortal siddhas. That's why you learn siddha yoga from. Oh. So do you offer online classes for uh, people yeah. who are not in India? Yeah, yeah. So the website is chamundigurukulam.in, right? .in, that's right. Okay. Okay. We are offering more and more programs. Now we just started with something basic. I started last November, man. Last oh. November I had some followers. <laughs> and now we have one lakh followers on YouTube. It's not an easy thing. It is not, for sure. Mm -hmm. So and um, I was and when whenever I listen to you, you know, through YouTube I've listened to multiple videos and because most of things I'm asking, you've already answered them. But the reason why I'm asking is for sake of my listeners. Because, and also I'm trying to go a little bit tangential. like Because I have more deeper questions. But I... I, I mean, every host brings their own uh, unique questions. And they do get... I try to give something new whenever I... So it's not the same old things I'm talking even in your podcast. Yes, yes. That, I want, because, want your podcast to have something unique which is not there in other podcasts as well. Wow. Thank you for making me part of you, making me a very tiny part of your creative purpose. And that's, <laughs> that, that, that matters a lot to me. So before we go towards the end of this session, because uh, you've given me one hour already. So um, I just want to get five thumb rules from you. Hmm. Five thumb rules or uh, five basic principles uh, hmm. through which I can achieve any of my ambitions which are positive mm. or create mm. a greater impact to me as well as the society around me. Yeah, everything starts with total self-honesty. Yeah. Self-honesty, okay. Yes, you have to be totally honest to yourself about everything. And then when you have total self-honesty, you will get clarity of problems in your life. You'll know what the problems are and you'll be able to name it without getting scared. Then the third step is to build a team. You cannot solve these problems alone. So you have to build a team and for that you have to become a leader, you have to become a new person, you have to become a Veera, a warrior. So build yourself into a Veera and invite other people. Invite other people is the fourth step. And fifth step is just let the process happen, have patience. These are the five steps we should follow. Self-honesty, clarity of problems, transformation into a leader, invitation of others, and then finally, having patience to let the process work. Let other people do what they're really expert at. You don't go and interfere. I never ask my entrepreneurs how you spent your day. I'm not interested. I just want to know when's the next show. Because that's all I do. I go and shoot. So I have my shooting schedule and I just go shoot. That's all I have to do. It's not that hectic or so. But I do answer questions from my students. So that can sometimes get hectic. Especially if Guru Purnima comes, I took three days to just reply to all my students for their Guru Purnima wishes. You know, so that gets hectic only during that time of the year. But the rest of the year is not very hectic. I work one hour a day with my students answering the questions and most of the questions have already been answered. I just have to share a link. And <laughs> yeah, man, my YouTube has become like a, a, a search engine for problems. You can write your problem, money plus Guru Pashupati and you'll find the answers. I, I, 
<laughs> I got it just now. Yeah, yeah, because that's where uh, I, uh, the, the host, when I responded, commented, how do I invite Guruji onto my podcast? She responded that, please text him onto Instagram. Then he will, uh, their team or will reach out. To I him. took my WhatsApp out. I don't have WhatsApp now. Okay. It's bothering me, man. It is like not learning anything. Don't want to learn. They don't have self-honesty. How can I help them? They don't have the first step. So when people are not being honest to themselves, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this person. So I said, let me get rid of WhatsApp fully. There was a time I was putting my WhatsApp number around, please contact me, please contact me, you know. <laughs> there was a time. <laughs> but now I don't have to do that. Because I just decided I'll put everything out for free. Like whatever people are crying about, I'll answer that question. And I did that. And now you can use YouTube as a search. You can find anything. Help. Plus Guru Pashupati will find it. Relationships, Guru Pashupati will find it. Communications, you'll find it. Yoga also, you'll find it. I'm talking about the Yoga Sutra. Nobody's talking about the Yoga Sutra. Because you don't know it. Because you don't know the Sandhya Bhasha of Sanskrit. Yes, you have. You have uh, um, I've seen the recent video of Yoga Sutra commentary. I mean, sorry, uh, the commentary of you on Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Mm -hmm. And the way you've... Uh, you also touched mystic aspects like he being uh, the uh, Adi Shesha and how the things are working out. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention all those channels in my description so that people reach out, reach out because they have to. They to have be to honest, I don't know how many channels I have, whether it's a 9 or 10. I don't know. I'll try to find whatever I can. <laughs> I have to call <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Sir. There's another girl, life-changing manifestation also, where I've spoken about all these things. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Life-changing manifestation and uh, Devi Bhagavat as well. Devi so, Bhagavat, yeah. such an important one. Yeah. So, I'm well, not putting out knowledge out there at the pace at which people can swallow it. You can't keep up with my podcast. I make eight or nine podcasts in a week. So, you just can't keep up. Yeah. Whatever you want, you can use it later as Google search when you really want it. You know, go to YouTube and use it as a search engine, and you can find all the information. As long as you write Guru Pashupati in the search and your problem, you'll find something. How to fix your eyes? You'll find something. <laughs> <laughs> because see, there you guys about everything, like, like holistic. Uh... It's not about everything, but I have to do this. I'm doing it as a service for people. It's not Siddha Yoga. I'm just giving them some simple upayas because I'm a guru and I'm uh, I'm an adhikari, parampara adhikari of my akhada. Okay. So I get to create techniques for people on demand. I have the permission to do that from my akhada, the authority. So the stuff that I give you will work, whatever it is. So I just listen to people's crying and then I make... I've created a solution called the frame, you know. There's no problem that can't be solved when you have the right frame. For example, this lady called me today and she said that uh, my son is very depressed and I don't know what to do. I said, you have the wrong frame. You're a helpless mother. And your son is saying, I want to kill myself. And he's saying things like, why did you give birth to me? So she's feeling guilty. She's feeling depressed. She's feeling sad. She feels rejected. She's feeling all those things. I said, you're just a victim at this frame. Why don't you change it? So I'm a Devi. I was going to find out the root cause of depression and get it, get rid of it from this country. Why are you not that person? If you become that person, then won't you find the root of it? You'll find it. Why are you thinking like an ordinary human being? Think like a goddess, I told you. Change the frame for her. And she was laughing also at the end of it. Same person who was crying started laughing because the frame changed. Very powerful. Very mm. powerful. Wow. The who we are is very important. When we can look at our behavior and see how small we have made ourselves. Don't be that small. I feel I'm divine, man. That's what I feel. I, I want to think like a god. I don't want to think like a human. Humans are full of flaws and crying. That's all. I don't cry. When both my parents died, I didn't cry. Oh, sorry to know that. Because I know what to do. 
I, I knew how to take them across in their souls. I knew how to take them across from the Vaitharni and get them back into the world of the living. I did it. And so there was nothing for me. I have the frame that I'm a Kal Guru. I can actually do this. I can take people across the Vaitharni to work. So when you have a divine frame and abilities, then you don't have to worry. So I told her, be a Devi. And she could feel that. Yes, I should not be like this victim. I need to empower myself in this situation. Then I told her what to do. I said, the rest is a matter of communication. I gave her the solution. I didn't leave her like that. But I'm going to do this now. I've taken up a new project. I've put everything aside when I've taken up a new project. And I've told people to give me the list of unsolvable problems. My students, okay, I have I have about a thousand students. I've asked them to give me a list of unsolvable problems. And they're like, I will get at least 100 and 150 responses for that. I'm going to take them and reframe them and teach people how to reframe. So I think frame is the only thing people need to learn right now. So they can get out of their misery and be somebody they can respect. Beautiful. Frame and purpose are the ones which leads us to the Ananda, I guess. Amazing. Do anything. There's nothing something the purpose can't do. Yun Sang uh, was my inspiration. He went at least nine, ten times to China, taking all the Buddhist textbooks, and he get he got plundered. You know how long it took him to capture those books? He came back again and again. He wrote all translations of all those books again in Chinese, and again he carried them. He got he thought he'll take another route. There won't be any uh, decoits. They were looking for money, but he didn't have any money. So they got angry and burnt the books. Oh. This happened nine times. Then he finally found a way that there, uh, there are no decoits. The tenth time, that's how Buddhism went to China. Wow. I so never knew this. Yeah, I'm saying this, this is the kind of persistence that we need. You know how many years that took him? 15, 20 years. People do long-term projects. You know, they win. So, you know, I, I was so proud of the work I've done when I was a young man. Then my aunt came and said, you know, this guy, come, let me show you in the newspaper what people are doing. That time we didn't have internet. And she showed me uh, how, she showed me about the Maxese Award winners and their story. And how long they worked to get that Maxese Award. What is that massive amount of work that they've done? And I said, okay, aunt, I'm going to do this kind of massive work. My aunt is also no more. But I still remember her words. And I think, let's do something big. Why should we do something small that's going to be forgotten tomorrow? Who do we want to prove to some small people? We want to prove how big we are in front of them. Well, it's not about proving your size. It's about achieving something big. And you don't need to prove anything to anyone. Wow, amazing, sir. Ah, wow. It was a, uh, it was amazing talking to you because uh, I feel um, as if I have uh, bathed in um, a very, you know, what should I say, river, uh, river Ganges or something like that. Because it feels, uh, it feels so refreshing. Lot of questions, lot of blanks which were there in the paragraphs which I created all through my life. Like some. Some of them got certainly filled up, like because the idea of the purpose and the frame, uh, this kind of gives me overall clarity. And looking things like a bird helps me out creating a better life. I hope people who listen to this podcast would be changed as I am as well, and they get to learn a lot. I mean, first, certainly I've learned a lot from this podcast for sure. I hope. Um, I, I really hope this podcast goes viral and gets you the success that you need and also helps educate people with what uh, they need to do. Yeah, may it reach more and more people. Shiva bless us both. Oh, you bless me, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you, sir. Right. All right, so let me stop the recordings. <laughs>